I love this painting so much because of the way in which he portrays the Savior, in the way he portrays every man, every person who at some time in their life is prone to accuse and to be self-righteous. It is a formidable moment in the Savior's example to us how we might interact with our neighbor. How would we be a neighbor to someone? I am Mark Magleby, uh, Director of the Museum of Art at Brigham Young University. And it's my privilege today to talk about Bait, which is a work by Bruce Hinkson Smith, one of the great religious artists of our time. This painting uh, refers to the moment in which a woman is taken in adultery and Jesus has a, an opportunity to teach. And in his teaching, he is writing on the ground. There is a significance to this. This is the only time I'm informed in the New Testament where Jesus is shown to be writing or referring to him writing himself. And it does not say what he was writing. We can only speculate on that. And some have even speculated that it might be referring to Jeremiah 31, 33. This shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law into their inward parts and will write it in their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Jesus is here very, very calmly inscribing something that is going to both create discord and ultimately solve the problem. As we look at this beautifully portrayed woman taken in adultery, she is being handled rudely by this group of people. Everyone is looking to Jesus to make a mistake in this judgment. We're looking here at a very, very intimate portrait of Jesus. If we were to square this off, if we were to crop this off without all the tumult, it might be a piece of meditative, of calming thought of meditation that, uh, that we would enjoy looking at all the time. But I have to say, as much as I love Bruce Hicks and Smith's paintings, I'm not sure I could live with this, this one every single day. There is so much antagonism, so much hyperbole. There are so many angry faces and the gestures going back and forth. There's this way and this way and directly into Jesus's face, into his mind. You see this almost demonic kind of facial expression, almost looks like a mask as he accuses Jesus of something. Very few seem to be contemplative, kind of on the outskirts, a little less harsh. And one here who, clinging to a column in the temple, is looking down in a more pensive or thoughtful way at what Jesus is writing on the ground. In the same way, the finger of Jehovah had previously written on the tablets of stone, the Mosaic laws. I also like, as I look very, very closely at the reserved manner the calmness of Jesus in the middle of the tumult. His lips are parted. It's almost as if he's whispering, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. That did it. That, that solved the entire problem. And you see here that there is going to be a change in this accusational moment. They are all going to go away. And then Jesus, left alone with the woman, where are your accusers? And if they don't accuse you, then I don't accuse you. It wasn't glossing over anything. It was creating balance where there was injustice. It's a murderous crowd that he's dealing with. And Jesus stabilized it like calming the sea. And they departed.